the United States, there's been a long-term debate about whether going to school makes you smarter or whether differences in how smart people are are basically determined by one's genetics, something that one's inherits, so that how smart you are is more or less de determined at birth. This question became uh, one of enormous national interest with the publication of a book by Richard Herdstein and Charles Murray called The Bell Curve, uh, in which they argued that one's inherent genes were far, far more important than one's family or the environment more generally in success in life, and that the principal explanation for this was that people's uh, mental intelligence, uh, what we often call IQ, intelligence quotients, is something that's fixed throughout life. Uh, this book sold more than half a million copies. Uh, there are thousands of reviews with conservatives praising it as giving the correct understanding of the world when liberals, uh, in the most vitriolic terms, uh, denouncing the book as just terrible and a bad piece of research. We have this interesting case where conservatives and liberals have just totally different ideas about sort of uh, how schooling affects people's mental ability. The difficult question here is that we have uh, a problem of selection, which is that people who get more schooling are in general smarter uh, to begin with than the people who don't. And so the question becomes, can we figure out a way to, to separate out what we would call the causal effect of education, the effect that education has uh, in terms of making you smarter or not, versus the fact that smarter people uh, are more likely to get more education than people who aren't, i.e. people who are smarter initially. So what I've done is looked at a national data set um, where everybody was given something called the Armed Services Folk, uh, Forces uh, Test. This is the test that you take to get into the military. It's uh, considered a general mental ability type test. Uh, we had about 6,000 people to do the analysis on. And uh, we were able to see how people's um, mental ability changed uh, when they, how, as they aged, as well as uh, changed um, uh, when they got more schooling or when they had stopped schooling. It took some sophisticated statistical modeling I don't want to go into, um, but this allowed us to sort out the whole question. And what did we find? Uh, well, we actually found a finding that made both conservatives and liberals unhappy. So uh, if you look at the data, it turns out that going to school uh, makes you smarter uh, by a fair bit, but that right after you get out of school, you get dumber. <laughs> so that part of, of what being in school, the way it makes you smarter is you learn more, but just by being in school and you know taking lots of tests, you turn out to be a good test taker. So you see this very interesting thing where uh, people are getting smarter and smarter as they age and stay in school, and then whatever point they stop, there's like this cliff that they fall off, and they lose anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of the overall effect of, of schooling. So I think this raises the very interesting question is how should we think about this? What have I found? And I like to make the analogy to two things. One is athletic talent and the other is music talent. Uh, so I'm a very avid tennis player. Uh, and if you think about tennis, there are three interesting aspects of it. One is um, it takes an enormous amount of national talent and uh, Roger Federer is in no danger of being threatened by me uh, on the tennis court and never would have been even if I had started playing tennis at two and played tennis 
you know, all my life. I mean, uh, I'm an okay athlete. I'm not a great athlete. He, he obviously is. Second is um, I've never met anybody who had never played tennis who could pick up a tennis racket and play it at all well, no matter how good an athlete they were. It takes, you know, months of practice and stuff to learn how to play tennis. Tennis is also one of these sports that if you don't play for, for six months, you play a lot worse. So schooling seems a bit like tennis, right? Which is there are big permanent fixed differences. That's, that's the ones that the conservatives like. On the other hand, you have to learn how to do it. Uh, that's the one liberals like. But you better keep yourself in shape. Or if I may uh, give a, a, a parallel analogy, Imagine being a, a concert violinist. Uh, again, there are huge uh, fixed differences in people's basic uh, music ability. Many of us, no matter how much long we ever practiced the uh, violin, would never end up at the Boston Symphony, one of the world's best. On the other hand, as uh, many parents, including myself, will tell you, anybody who picks up a musical instrument, a violin, and starts to try to play it. Uh, there are many, many weeks before you hear anything that uh, sounds reasonably like music, right? You're holding your ears for quite, quite some time. But then if you do talk to a concert violinist, they will also tell you that it's very important that they practice every day. Uh, because if you go weeks or months without practicing, they do a lot worse. So what, we, what are we finding here is that kind of mental ability, at least as it's tested or measured by these tests, seems to be like athletic or music ability. Yes, it's, there, are, there are important individual differences. Yes, it's something you have to uh, acquire. And it's something you have to keep up, which may well be an explanation why some of us have decided to spend the rest of our lives in school, uh, though getting paid as professors. It's certainly going to be important to look and see whether the effects of schooling on mental ability differ across different uh, demographic groups. Uh, does it matter whether you come from a war, uh, poor or rich family, uh, minority, nine, nine, uh, majority parts of the population, men versus women? Uh, we don't know anything about sort of um, the differential effects that might education might have. Um, and certainly also the question of sort of what, you know, are the drop-offs as big at, say, at the end of high school as they are late, later? We have some suggestion that if the drop-offs get bigger uh, the farther out you go in education. And of course, education is not a singular thing. So we also would be very useful to look at types of education. Uh, is it a more applied education, say going to business school versus a liberal arts education. Uh, do those have different kinds of effects? And then questions about whether do different schools or different methods of education end up having different effects on mental ability. So, uh, you know, we've really started with this one very basic debate about whether education, uh, you learn anything at all, does it make you smarter? to really there should be a, a much uh, more detailed, finer set of questions of um, what kinds of education uh, might or might not affect what kinds of mental abilities. Those are questions that need to be answered. I think the other point was by doing that research, it also helped uh, us understand you know, better what these research methods are doing. There will be a very nice, what we call placebo test, which is in this data, we actually have measures of how, how much uh, practical education you have. You know, what, you're, what do you know about fixing automobiles, and uh, electrical mechanics and stuff? Well, if we find out that going to a liberal arts college makes you a better know more about cars, um, I think that's going to be, uh, raise very serious questions about how good the research is. <laughs>